in power of God in his life. His legs got injured when he got admitted at the local hospital where he met Pastor Robert, who was ministering to the patient. The man of God prayed for him as well, and he got discharged at the beginning of the week after receiving prayer over the weekend. He then decided to attend Pastor Robert's service during the very same week he got discharged out of the hospital. Pastor Robert prayed for him again, and he began to walk without crutches. He received his healing. He testified again over the weekend that his legs have been healed ever since the day he received prayer. They are not painful, and he is not using crutches at all. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our announcements are as follows. Every morning at 6 a.m. from Monday to Friday, we have our morning prayer, which is at 7 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Our midday service starts at 5 to 12, and then we have our evening service, which starts at half past 6 every night. Our midnight prayer starts at 5 to 12 every night, and we also have our weekly prayer and fasting, which is on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. The details of the fasting are shared on our different WhatsApp groups. Amen. Amen. And for those who want to partake in the blessings of the Lord through tithe and offerings, the banking details are shared on our different WhatsApp groups, on our messenger groups, as well as on our different Facebook platforms. Amen. Amen. Tonight we will get the word of God from the book of Isaiah chapter 55 from verse 10. It reads as follows. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for, for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be refilled. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people and let no eunuch complain. I am only a dry tree. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial in the name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever. This I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Amen. Amen. Also tonight we will have the privilege to go through the word of God together, believing the word of God to be taught with power power of the Holy Spirit, power to heal, power to bless, power to protect in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Bible says that in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse number 10 as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and make it bud and flourish so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. The Bible says that as the rain when the rain rained down from heaven. The Bible said that that rain, when it rained down from heaven, 
it goes down, it comes here on earth. And it does not go back without doing what it has been sent for. Every time it rains, something will always happen to the ground. It would have watered what it need to water. And it will make the earth bud and flourish. That's what the water, the rain does as a result of rain. Then the Bible said that the word of God, which goes out, out of God's mouth, the Bible said that it will not return to it empty without accomplish what God would desire to achieve the purpose for which he has sent it forth for. Amen. And that means what the word Amen. of God is trying to say to us. When God speaks a word, you know, when he has spoken that word, what God has spoken about, it will surely come to pass. It will surely Amen. happen. Amen. When God speaks a word, sometimes he will speak a word through his word. He will speak a word through his servants. God is saying that, hey, it will not, God won't speak a word, empty words, but God will speak, speaks the word that he will fulfill. You know, sometimes Amen. God is speaking. When God is speaking, people, they think, ah, these are just the words to encourage us. These are just the words. But if it is God who have said it, the Bible is trying to say to you, don't worry, it will come to pass because it is God who have said it. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. There is something that is so profound that the Bible talks about from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 12. The Bible said that the Lord said to me, You have seen correctly. I am watching. I am watching to see my word is fulfilled, that my word is fulfilled. That means God is saying that he is watching over his word, his word that is fulfilled. That means God does not just speak a word and goes away from it, but he watches that whatever he has said, that it come to pass. And it's very, very much important that we understand as we walk with God that God is God of His Word. It's God of His Word who does not joke around with His Word, who says things that He will fulfill. Amen. You know, some of the things when you're reading the Word of God, you will realize it was just a prophecy. It was just a prophecy. It was something that God have said. Sometimes even the hearer, those who were listening to that word, they thought, ah, it's just a word that have been said. Not expecting that um, what they have said will this, what God have said will this come to pass. But I'm here to tell you that if it is, the word of God that the servant of God have said, being inspired of the Holy Spirit, it will surely come to pass. Amen. One of the example is an example of the man Abraham. The Bible said that Abraham, to Abraham, God said that you will be father of many. I will bless you with a son. You will have a son. And the Bible says that, you know, 
Abraham, by the time that God had told him that he will have a son, he was already old. He was already old. You know, as he was already old, he was even wondering what God is saying will it come to pass. Sometimes he was also not believing but that particular time because he was very old. And the Bible says, after so many years, God said that Abraham, you will have a son. But Abraham, because he was old, he did not, he, he reached even to the level where they don't believe that it is possible for them to have a son because they've tried for so many times that will they ever have a son? And they say, okay, let us make a plan. And they got uh, one of the servants by the name of Hagar. And Hagar carried an Ishmael. Even the time when God visited Abraham that you will have a son of the promise. The Bible said that Abraham could say, uh, God, I know you have talked about the son of promise, but I've got Ishmael. Can't Ishmael be the son of promise? And the Bible said that God said, no, you will carry the son, Isaac. You will carry Isaac. And the Bible said that one day, there was um, three visitors that came. Those three visitors that came, the Bible say that as they are about to go, and Abraham insisted to give them something to eat, and something to eat was prepared for them. And the Bible said that when they were enjoying something to eat, and Abraham is seated with them, and Sarah is sitting outside, one of the angels said that next time, by this next year, by this time, you will be carrying your son. And the Bible said that Sarah was sitting at the, at the entrance. And she laughed. And the Bible said that the angel said that, ah, why is Sarah laughing? Sarah even lied that I did not laugh, but she laughed. And the reason why she was laughing is because she did not believe that it was going to be possible for her to carry her own son. She did not believe Amen. that it was even possible for her to carry her own miracle. To her, she thought Amen. it was impossible. Not knowing nothing is impossible with God. Not knowing that it is not over until God says it's over. That means God will Amen. always fulfill what he has said. God will always make sure that what he has said comes to pass. No matter what it takes, no matter how long it takes, if it is God who has said something, be rest assured it will surely come to pass. Amen. And the Bible say that, the angel of the Lord say that, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for God? Absolutely not. When God has given you a promise, when God has given you a promise, when God has given you a prophecy, whether you must not lose heart, take the word, believe the word, and the word will produce what it talks about. Because God says that, so his word that comes out of his mouth it will not return to him empty, but will accomplish whatever he desired it to accomplish. That is very, very much important to understand that God does not joke. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. God does not joke. Whatever that God says, it will surely come to pass. Be rest assured. Sometimes God, because sometimes we must know how God speaks. Sometimes how God speaks, he speaks through his servants. As he speaks through his servants, 
You know, if you are rest assured, this is the servant of God who is saying this, inspired of the Holy Spirit. Don't worry, don't doubt how it will come to pass because it is not the servant who is the fulfiller of the word, but it is God who is the fulfiller of the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible talks about one day there were two kings. These two kings, you know, they wanted to go to war. One of the kings was uh, Jehoshaphat. And the Bible says that Jehoshaphat, when before they go to this war, you know, they say that, okay, we're going to war. But before we go to war, let us inquire, what is the mind of God? What does God say about this war? Are we going to win it? Are we going to be successful out of it? And the Bible says that, they say that, okay, let's go to the man of God. And you know, all the, the prophets were there, they prophesied that they were going to be successful in this war. They are going to be successful. You know, there, there were a lot of counsel of prophets. And the Bible says, this is that Jehoshaphat was like, something is wrong here. Why are all these prophets are speaking like this? But the Bible said that he asked, is there no any other prophet? And the Bible says, they said that no, there was one prophet. This prophet, he said that he does not, he prophesy, you know, when he speaks, he does not, he did not favor Ahab. Then, as he prophesied, he prophesied what was about to happen to the war. And Ahab did not take what the prophet said, as usual, because he thinks this man just speaks. But it was God who was speaking. And surely at the wall, whatever he prophesied, it come to pass. Then, you know, the servant of God, most of the time, when God wants to do something, he will speak through the servant of God. As the Bible says that God does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. Amen then most of the time when God wants to do something, he will reveal his plans, what he's about to do through his servants, the prophets, to his servants. Then before he do anything most of the time, he will reveal the plan to the servants of God. Then that's why it's very, very much important to listen and believe when God is speaking, but with discernment. Because sometimes some may just say what you want to hear. And sometimes God, if God is speaking, it will surely come to pass. As a result to show, it is God who was saying it. Amen. And the Bible say, it talks about other time. It was a time of famine. When it was a time of famine, the Bible says, it was a time that in the land there were women who were even eating their own children. And the king, when he heard those kind of cases, he said that, no, let me go to Elijah. Elisha was the prophet of the time. And the Bible said that, Elisha said that, tomorrow this economic crisis is going to turn around. Things are going Amen. to change. This is what God is saying. And the Bible said that one of the presidential advisors who, was the, who the king was leaning on loved and said that it is impossible. It is impossible. It is not going to happen. And the man of God said that, no, you will, it will happen. You will see it, but you're not going to enjoy it. Because he's laughing to what God is saying through the man of God. Did it change? Yes, it changed the following day. The Bible talks about there were three lepers. 
who was also hungry, as they were hungry. They said that, okay, let us go to the camp where the soldiers of Arameans were. Let's go there. If we die, we die. Let's go and beg for food. But because there was a spoken word where God wanted to fulfill his word, where God wanted what he had said to come to pass, the Bible say that the Aramean soldiers, as they hear those, those leprous guys coming, they begin to hear like an army of Israel is coming and they run away and leave the whole food. So that the, the prophecy of the man of God can come to pass. What God have said must come to pass. Amen. And they go and they enjoy food. After enjoying food, they realize there were a lot of food, more than they can handle. They go with some. They come back and eat. They say that, no, it won't be right. For us to enjoy this food alone. Let us go and tell the king what God have done. Because in the city there was a drought. In the city there was a famine. And indeed, the economic situation of the country changed overnight. And as the people were running, they trampled over that advisor and he died. As how the men of God have said it, it happens like that. Amen. Economic crisis change overnight, number one. Number two, the men of God, the men who the men of God said that he will not enjoy of it. He did not. Because the word of God does not come forth. That's what the Bible says that. So the word that goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire to achieve the purpose Amen. for which I have set Amen. it forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Fire. 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 Say, I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. Jesus says in the book of John, chapter 6, verse number 63 The Spirit gives life, the flesh can't nothing. The words that I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. The Bible says that. Jesus said, the words that I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit. They are full of life. They are full of power. Amen. That's why it is impossible for God to say it and it does not come to pass and it does not happen. Because that word of God is full of anointing is full of power supernatural energy to cause it to come to pass Amen. then this evening I don't know what God have said to you what God have said to your life I don't know it you may wonder will it come to pass will it happen I'm trying to say to you because God has said it, it will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As the Bible says that his word is like as if the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and make it bad or flourish so your life will flourish and will bad because of the word of the prophecies which has been spoken to you in Jesus name Amen. Amen. and the Bible says that so that it will yield seed to the sower bread for the eater the word of God the Bible says that it will make so that there may be results 
I'm not, I'm not sure. What result are you looking for? But if it's the word that has been spoken to you, the Bible said that there will be a seed. There will be a result that you will see which is coming from the word. It is not going to be a, an accidental result. It will be a result of the word that have been spoken to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that in verse number 12 of Isaiah chapter 55, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into songs before you and all trees of the field will clap their hands. Then the Bible says that you will go out in joy. I don't know, but I'm the word of God is saying to you tonight. You will go out in joy. You know, when the word of God says that you will go out in joy, the Bible is saying that all will be well in your life. In such a way, when you go out, you will go out in joy because all is well. Because you can't go out in joy when the things are not well. You can't go out in joy when the things are not well. Then when the word of God says, you will go out in joy. That means God is saying, that I will make everything well. And there will be something to make you to be joyous. So that you do what? You go out in joy. And the Bible yeah. says that. And you will be led forth in peace. With peace. You will be led forth in peace. You, God says that. As God, is, as God is God of peace. As Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. The Bible is saying that. You will, he will make sure that there will be peace all around us. There will Amen. be peace all around us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says that the mountains and the hills will burst into songs before you. All trees of the field will clap their hands. Great people, the Bible said that they will burst in songs. And the Bible said that even other people out there, when they see you, eh, they will clap your, their hands. They will clap your hand, their hands in celebration of your presence. If in celebration of your appearance, in celebration of your coming, I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. It will be great if you are following what I'm saying because the word of God says, hey, His word, it does not, it is not, it cannot be spoken. And when it's spoken and it does not accomplish what it has been spoken about, then what the word of God is saying that when God is saying these things about it, that you will be celebrated you will be honored. It's because God is saying something that is going to happen in your life and is going to be fulfilled Amen. because the word of God does not come forth out of God's mouth without accomplishing Amen. what he has said to be accomplished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, the people of old, the people of old were very serious. They did not play with words. If you can imagine, after when Isaac had said to Esau, he must bring him some game so that he may bless him. And yet, Jacob came and brought a game. Uh, and brought food and Jacob was blessed and from that moment he did not wait to say okay my father give me what belongs to me 
give me some cows that belongs to me give me because um isaac was rich and jacob had an inheritance inheritance that if he could have stayed in his father's house he was going to be blessed he was going to be given but he only took a word that his father had blessed him and he realized that because he had stolen the blessing he can't stay and he ran for his life knowing that he's rich knowing that he's going to prosper without it being given any scent from his father only taken a word and he go to his uncle Laban and he flourish and even the nation of Israel today is flourishing based on the word that has been spoken to Joseph, to Jacob and from that moment his brother Esau had a beef against him he was angry against him and the reason why he was angry it was because his father has spoken only a word this family, they, they, they knew the significance of the word, a spoken Amen. word, which is called a blessing. Amen. Then I, I, I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. They know the what the significance of the power of the spoken words. Amen. In which the Bible here, the king when he's going to the war, Balak and Balaam, and they said that okay, because he's going to the war, and so he must go and call the men of God just to come and speak the word Amen. before he and curse Israel. So that when he have cursed Israel, he know that this time, because the man who would have spoken is the man of God, whatever he have bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever he have said will come to pass. And they know the significance of the word. As a child of God, you must know the significance of the spoken word significant of prophecy which has been spoken in your life and you believe it you carry it uh, and when you believe it and when you carry it you will see it getting fulfilled in your life Amen. because when God speaks a word he watches over it and just watches over the prophecy the Holy Amen. Ghost make sure whatever that has been spoken, it must come to pass. Amen. You know, then if many have got a revelation, revelation, they will not treat the word that has been spoken for granted. They will be looking for the word. They will be looking for the word. The word of the men of God. The word of the prophets. The word of God. That just speak a word. Hallelujah. Amen. Just speak a word. That's all you need. Somebody will, will be told, can I give you money or can I speak word over your life? Don't say, no, just speak a word because they know that out of that word, miracle is going to happen. Out of that word, things will turn around. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you will flourish in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nobody will stand against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will never fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are prosperous in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Say, I am, I am prosperous. I am prosperous. I am successful. I am successful. I am blessed. I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, great things are happening. Great things are happening. Great things are happening. I am making them to happen. I am making them to happen. I am making them to happen. Because I am blessed. Because I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Say fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Say I love the word of God. I love the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. I'm enjoying the word of God. The words are very, very much important. That the Bible says that in the book of Numbers, chapter six. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how they are to bless Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The Lord will put your name will put my name on Israelites and I will bless them. So the Bible says that, so that they will put my name on Israelites and I will bless them. The Bible says that, Amen. tell the priest to say this in a daily basis. Just say this, so that God may move to bless and Israel can be unstoppable. I'm saying to you tonight, you are unstoppable in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said to you, you are successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you do shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, once you know this secret, then you will just make sure that there is a word that is going ahead of you. And once that word goes ahead of you, nobody can stop you. No witch can stop you. No charm can stop you. No tokolosh can stop you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the word act. When the word has been spoken, heaven backs up and makes sure that whatever has been said, it comes to pass. Wherever you are, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Akatola <laughs> Yes. 
Sota Kabai Koto Brayika Endina Rosa Karabashia Kalabaye Tiba Akriyato Brayato Kabayato Akraya Sofra Ya Sota Kabaika E Barabaika